Welcome back to the show. Today, I got another special guest for you straight from the mean streets of Orlando. Not the mean streets. It's great streets. Great real <laughs> estate market. Orlando, Florida. Mr. Michael Reed, welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, thanks, Brandon. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, for sure. Looking forward to, to the conversation that we're going to have. So for, for everybody watching the show, Michael, just real quick, um, you're in Orlando, but, but give us some context. How long have you been in real estate? You know, I started real estate uh, in January of 2020. I actually got, um, I don't know if I told you this, Brandon, but I, I used to uh, travel and do speaking uh, about marketing at different legal conferences. And when COVID hit, I, I remember because I had 32 uh, uh, events booked, like Southwest, like, you know, was fully booked. And I spent a bunch of money in the beginning of the year and they just got grounded. And I was like, what am I going to do? hanging out in Orlando and, and I used to flip homes in California. So I thought, you know what, let me try to do that. And it was just, I was just devastated. It was, this is just like so competitive in Orlando for real estate investing. And so I was sitting there and I saw a class that said, um, this was starting literally the next day. It was a week long class for real estate to become licensed. And so that's what I did. i I did the week long class, 60 hours, got licensed, passed it the first try and, um, and, and it's never looked back. Good for you. I'm, I'm curious the, you and I are going to have some good conversations about prospecting and lead generation and marketing and all these different things, but what, like with your skill set, why, why be, why become a real estate agent or real estate salesperson rather than something else with, with your skill set? Yeah, that's a good question because, you know, I have other companies um, that are successful that are continue to make money. And, uh, and uh, you know, the long story short, is it's very simple. You know, one of the businesses I have is one of the first ones that made money was serving legal documents, serving people divorce papers and getting doors slammed in my face. And, you know, and <clears throat> the story, the short story of that was I got served divorce papers. And it's, it seems bad or whatever, but you know, everybody goes through their journey. And, but when I got served that, it was like, I got paid or the guy, I asked the guy, would you get paid? He got paid 50 bucks to just to deliver a piece of paper. And I took that concept. I applied it to my business. I started a business right there out of that. And uh, I ended up getting paid $99 to serve a paper. Well, I want to tell you the amount of work that goes into serving somebody between printing it, uh, finding them, serving them and getting paid is way more complicated than what you do as a real estate agent and way more stressful on, on you. And I, uh, it's the first time I got a check for, you know, $5,000. I was like, I didn't do really much. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I listed the house. Uh, and, and that's one good thing, Brandon, I don't know if you want to get into it, but that was the first thing I, I joined Keller Williams and they beat us up about, you know, leads, listings, leverage, you know, Gary Keller's thing. And, and I, um, so right away, my third day being licensed, I got a listing appointment because I had already been learning how to um, prospect. Got it. Got it. Well, that makes sense. And, you know, yeah, the money, I always say like the money in our industry is like the highest paid work for people that put in the work. Mm -hmm. And for people that don't want to work hard, it's like the lowest paying job by far in the world. Right. And so by far, yeah. um, it's amazing the money we can make. I mean, I have friends that have gone and now are, are orthopedic surgeons that are like, dude, fuck you. Like, how are you <laughs> making so much more money than I am? You have zero college education. Yep. Um, and, and so anyway, it's a great business for those people that really want to grind, um, which is what I want to talk about. So you've been in the business for about two years or so, right? Um, I think a good conversation that you and I can have is one that is highly debated, which is like the battle between like prospecting and marketing. And I believe there's a place for both. However, in this industry, I want your perspective on, I think most of the people that get into the industry of selling real estate understand the concept of marketing. They don't understand like what it means to be in sales, right? Mm -hmm. And so th they want to try to build a business by avoiding the sales work in our industry. And so from a marketer's perspective, what, what, like, what is your 
perspective of this argument? Yeah, so I love this. And, uh, <clears throat> and you know, what's funny, Brandon is, you know, I've watched you on YouTube a long time before I ever reached out and talked to your father in law, and, and, you know, and later you and uh, marketing has always been my life. Like I learned, I dove into click funnels. And, and when I was building my legal company, I was like, you don't serve people in the day, you serve them at night. So all day I had nothing to do but learn marketing. So I ended up starting a marketing company. And um, so your question about like marketing versus sales is kind of funny because I thought that to be a realtor, I needed to use my marketing skills and it was going to just be this crazy, awesome thing. And it, and it, there's some truth to that that we'll get into, but learning that like going direct to the, the seller and asking them someone who has raised their hand. And it's the same as a, it's the same marketing principle. Actually, when you're marketing to folks and you're, and you're doing a, a marketing com- campaign on Facebook, for example, you don't want to just market to the entire city. You want to market to people who've raised their hand, people who have already indicated that they're interested in a specific thing so that you can lower your marketing dollars. And to me, it's the same exact thing when it comes to direct sales. If I'm calling expires and FISBOs, I'm actually calling people who have already raised their hand and said, I'm interested in, in selling my home. And so I actually learned that sales was something I didn't do in my other companies. And actually, since I started doing prospecting and sales and real estate, I, I started a team uh, for my marketing for my website company. And the website customers have just went through the roof because guess what? We're calling people who we already know who right. might be interested in having a website. And they're going, sure. Yeah, I'd love to have a website like yours. You know. So let me, so this is so good. So let me ask you this. Let me try to unpack this even more. What, what, like being a marketing guy and I'm a sales guy. So this will be some good, healthy debate. I'm sure. Well, maybe not. Maybe you and I see this eye to eye. What, what do you, if you could pick one, what do you think is more critical to a business, a business marketing or sales? Um, so, okay. So I coach people for marketing, right. When, yep. when, when they start their own legal company, I do this, um, about every other day, I have another person I'm coaching that I'm helping kind of like what you're doing, but I do it for the legal space. Right. Yep. And well, the first thing that I tell them actually, and I, I didn't even relate this until you're asking me this, it makes a lot of sense. I would tell them the first thing they need to do to get legal customers is to go to the legal offices, meet them in person and, and, um, put them in the road warrior dive this app for serving papers, put them in road warrior and save all the attorney's addresses. Cause those attorneys aren't going to change. And so it's funny because when I, when they first start, I said, that's all you need to do. That is like a hundred percent of your focus needs to be prospecting physically going to their offices, providing value, meeting them, getting belly to belly. And so when for real estate, you know, if you're doing hundreds of sales, it would make more sense or hundreds of homes, potentially you're trying to get a hold of people. It would make more sense to call them instead of going into, you know, their houses or door knocking, but that's actually an effective method as well. You know, door knocking. So you say what's more, what's better. Um, I would definitely say prospecting is better um, because, you know, you're able to get in front of people immediately the same day you're outbound prospecting versus creating, um, you know, some kind of a marketing campaign that's going to interrupt people. And in, like on Facebook is a good example because on Facebook, people are scrolling, you know, and if they see something they're interested in, they may look at it, but the chances just statistically, the chances of them being like, yeah, I was thinking of selling. It's very low. Yeah. The intention on Facebook is not there. Like there's no intention behind. So, so again, uh, yeah. So you and I see that very, very, similar because the argument that I'm talking about that marketers in our space, really the narrative that they're trying to push is that like, give me your credit card and I'll make all your problems go away. But the thing that I try to help people in our industry, real estate agents understand is honest to God, Mike, I, I don't care how people get their leads. Like if they buy them, if they get them direct, if they're referrals, it doesn't matter. What I believe matters, that thing, the thing that moves the needle the most is one's ability to communicate with another human being in a way that distributes confidence that that consumer has in the agent to sign a contract. 
I call it sales skills. I think that is the most important thing because when the realtor, and I don't have my wallet here, when they pull out the credit card to give to the marketing company and they believe their problems are solved, they don't understand. We just talked about this in our coaching call on Monday with one of the agents. I don't know if you were there. He's been buying leads. Like he's been buying leads from a marketing company. And he's like, I haven't converted one. I'm like, right, because you still have to pick up the phone and sell and follow up and mm -hmm. present. And this is really what I want your opinion on, because I think this is the thing that's really causing so many agents to fail out of real estate is they don't understand that it's a sales business. Like you have to be a, a great salesperson, a person of communication. If you're going to do anything, forget lead generation. Yeah. Lead generation is not an issue. There's yeah. too many ways to generate leads. We yeah. have a lead conversion problem. What are your thoughts on, on all of that? Yeah, um, I, I think I agree with you completely. The one thing I would say is being fairly new to the industry, right? When you first come in, you see a lot of people, like there's one person I'm talking to now that I'm like kind of helping, trying to get to join my team if she wants to kind of thing, you know? And yeah, and I'm watching her and I'm like, you just need to make calls. You just need to get on the phone. And I see all these cool new Instagram posts and I'm like, okay, uh, like, yep. I, and it's like, it's like a father watching their child do what they said, you know, you can do that, but it's not going to bring you business, you know? That's it's not right. Gonna bring you and, and so I'm hoping as the time goes on that she'll see, and, and I've seen this before, Brandon, with other agents where they come around, oh, I don't yeah. prospect, oh, I right, don't call, right. and they come around and then they got a listing. I'm like, you got a listing, congratulations. What happened? Why well, I started calling and, yeah. oh, okay, started calling. So, so you know, I, I love the debate of marketing versus sales. So I will say something, because I for those marketers that are watching that, because yeah. actually I have a show about marketing and websites, and I will say the one thing is, when it comes to marketing, if you, if you're like, well, I got to do marketing. Yes. Do marketing. You know, there's a couple of great examples. Uh, I don't know if I can name drop here, but um, Absolutely. You know, Grant, Grant Cardone, you know, he's, yeah. a, he's a great example of, you know, do, do the hard work long before anybody knew who he was. He was pounding the pavement, making those calls, sales and prospecting, making relationships, personal relationships, and just connecting with people. And uh, same thing with Gary V. Actually, he, yep. he talked about it the other day. It's like you know, you know how much time I've spent on Discord and in DMs, building relationships with people in these companies. And then now you look at their brand. Now if they call you, so this is the other side, the power of marketing. And right. You know this very well with YouTube. Very well. Okay. Now when you call someone, you go, "This is Brandon Mulrennan." What? what? This is who? Yeah. Brandon, uh, what's up? Yeah. You know. And you, you, it's such a great point. I just. I like to, it's all about expectations. Yeah. A new real estate agent, Mike, is getting into this business, not wanting to make any outbound calls, wanting everyone to call them. My whole point, and then we'll move on to something else, is that like, I, I just don't think that's a reality that we should be setting with new people getting in the industry. Just to your point, they've got to pay the price first before they ever think that a branding or marketing campaign is going to work to their benefit of people reaching out to them. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would. Yeah, actually. Cause you know, when somebody calls me um, and they ask me like, Mike, you know, like I had one, one person say, I, I just want to pay you. You're the marketing guy. I just want to pay you five grand and just yep. run ads and, and I'll do it every month and we'll do it. And I, and to me as a marketer, I'm like, great. Okay. Right. But right. Then I was like, what is this for? And he's like, well, I want to get listings. And I said, well, you don't want to do that. Then you want to make calls or maybe we can hire a VA for you or something. I said, but calls got to be made Yeah. You know? or mailers, mailers. I mean, you could send out direct mail, yeah. I guess, if you want to do direct hand to hand thing. combat, something has to happen when we're communicating yeah. directly with that homeowner. Yeah, buyer so, leads, if you're going to pay yeah. for leads, they're going to be buyers and you're going to have to right. call them and follow up just the same way as if you were calling sellers. It's so true. So true. So so let's talk about your business for a second. So we're making this uh, January 4th, 2022. We just got done with 2021. There was, that, was 2021 your first full year in the business? Yeah, yeah I, I misspoke earlier. So 2020 <clears throat> was my first, like at the end of 2020 was like, uh, I had went through 2020, try to do real estate investing. And I became a realtor on January 7th of this last year, 2021. So it was my first year. Got it. Okay. So yeah. like in three days, it'd be full 12 months. Yeah. So let's unpack that. I mean, that's what I'm most interested in anyways. Like 
a, a new agent's first 12 months, right? So what were some of the big ahas, some of the big things that like, okay, you've been in this for a year now that maybe you wish you knew when you first got started that you could share with the audience? Uh, the first thing I share is this is what I share with all the people who, you know, join my team. Uh, I always tell them um, it's going to sound simple um, and it is, uh, but, but it's the only thing and it's calling get on the phones. I love it. Sm smile and dial. There's a guy, Brady and Brady and I don't talk for certain reasons, but Brady, uh, you know, was my old team leader. And I'll tell you that I came in every day and I had creative avoidance. Let me tell you something, Brandon, I have created spreadsheets that would make your head spin. <laughs> I have created Facebook algorithm, like lead capturing, uh, ad space. Of course you have, you're a marketing guy. Yeah. I mean, I was like, I am going to conquer this. And every day I would come in and Brady say, how many calls you make? I'm like, oh, no, I'm, I'm going to do that. You know, I got to get my, uh, you know, my, my listing uh, presentation down. And I had this fancy, I have a really nice presentation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that would be my feedback. Brandon is like, you know, you could do those things. Cool. I mean, cool. Do all those things, you know, get your stuff in order, but um, you know, but don't, don't let that be the thing that keeps you from putting in the reps from getting up eight o'clock, eight 30, getting your leads. To me, it's like a marketing campaign where I am the, I am the ad. Right. Right. So like what, for marketing, I don't know, uh, if you do this, but for my marketing campaigns, my actual marketing campaigns, I get up and I'm excited. How many conversions did I right. get to, to sign up for a website or to sign up for anything that I'm selling? Yeah. And to me, that's what it's like for, for sales is like when I'm getting on the phone, how many contacts that I make, right. how much, what's my conversion rate? Like I have this binder, you know, that has my, that has my schedule. That would be the first thing I would say was create a schedule Love it. of when you're going to prospect all the green is prospecting time, you know, and, and, uh, have a schedule for when you're going to prospect. And I'll be honest with you, Brandon, for the first few months, I didn't like maybe actually the first four months I made a couple calls. And the funny thing about that is the one day that I was like, I'm just going to call. I got a listing. The one Shocker. day I, <laughs> I called for two hours, got a listing. And, uh, and that same guy, that same listing has given me three more listings. This is, he's an investor and it's let crazy. me, what, what changed for you? Like, what was it? A guy coming into this industry as a marketer, right? You're, you, you think you're going to use your skills to get the phone to ring and yeah. you're fighting it. You got creative avoidance, shiny object syndrome, doing everything under the sun, but doing what your team leader at the time knew you should be doing, which is picking yeah. up the damn phone and making sales calls. You're trying to overcomplicate everything, but what changed? Yeah. So um, let's see. So I, I feel like I knew it. Like I always knew it because that's what like I you learned. felt it, right? Like, yeah, well, like I learned in the millionaire real estate agent, the prospecting I learned, you know, from Keller Williams, I ended up changing brokerages. And at that brokerage, they were struggling pretty big time. All their clients were buyers. And uh, two of the other agents in that office, uh, Delicia and Latoya, were both in your program. Uh, and, yeah. and I had already been watching you on, uh, on, on YouTube. And so when I signed up, I met uh, your, you know, your father-in-law. I met you guys and, <laughs> and signed up and I started going through it. It was just like everything I had already felt like I had learned, but I, like, I felt like I knew that I had to do, but I just didn't want to, you know, yeah. I just didn't want to get on the phones. Even, even today I'll, 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 you know, like I just told you, I hired a VA because I'm like, uh, I want to call. Um, and I feel like by having that ISA, it actually, every time I get an appointment booked, I'm like, yes, I need to make these calls uh, because I can do it better than them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's so, I mean, it, it's amazing. The similarities between this business and like, working out. Like it is yeah. almost identical. Like every day it's like, I don't want to work out. And as soon as you do, you're like, God, I feel so good. Why don't, yeah. why do I fight this every single yeah. day? Why? Why? Yeah. And it's just like prospecting. Right. Like you make two hours of calls. You're like, wow, I feel fucking phenomenal. Yeah. And I got four leads. I set one listing appointment. My got a great mindset. And every day you don't prospect, you feel like shit, you feel guilty. Yeah. And, uh, why do you think you struggle with it so bad? And why do you think people struggle with it so bad? Yeah. So, so you're so right about that. Like, I, I can't say there's very many times in my life where, where I've had this feeling, you know, this feeling where you go like, yes, Absolutely. you know, you take yes. your hand and you go, Oh, like, that's right. 
that feeling comes from prospecting uh, almost every single time. I've taken right. every single time. And, and um, so, yeah, so definitely it's there. It's something you want to do. Um, actually, I've been thinking about this more, more and more lately, Brandon. I think on the front end, it's this confrontation, avoiding confrontation. That's on the front end. Mm, yeah. That's on the front end, of course, because I don't want, you do get people that tell you, what do you want? Why are you? Of course, um, of course. So there's, a, there's a whole mindset issue, but I've been thinking more and more lately for me is almost like more intrinsic. It's more deep down. Like, do I deserve the success that's going to come from this? And that's pretty deep. That's pretty deep. And I, I, it's something I've kind of rejected quite a few times. Like, nah, nah, I'm, I'm mighty Mike, you know, I'm going to yeah. tear it up, but I feel like there's something there and I don't know if it's there for other people, but you know, maybe imposter syndrome a little bit. Like, you know, I think I have the skill. I know I have the skill, but, um, do I really, you know? Yeah. I love it, man. That's thanks for the honesty, by the way. And so, so you, one of the biggest takeaways you, you mentioned in your first 12 months was like just this realization of like stripping, stripping away insecurities and all the BS and like getting right to the truth that you must prospect in this business, which is what you're telling now people that are coming into your team. Is that right? Yeah. Anybody who comes on in my team, I just had it, just got off the phone right before this with the one that wants to be a commercial agent. She's like, I only want to sell four a year. I'm like, well, I said, if you know, they're multi-million dollar, you know, commercial yeah. deals. And I'm like, okay, well, if that's your goal, let's put it on there and let's prospect, see how, who we got to call to make connections with. No, I'll just use my sphere. I'm like, but can you guarantee your sphere is going to bring you those four? Right. You can't, no, you, you can't cannot. guarantee that, but you can guarantee that if you call a hundred other commercial agents in the area, you know, let's just say per week, a hundred per week and make connections with them, you can guarantee that you'll get one, you know, so you got to figure out the numbers by doing the work. But once you've done the work, you can figure out how many calls do I have to make connections with other commercial agents or maybe connections with business owners uh, before I can actually make a deal, you know, you just got to figure out the numbers and Brandon, you did a really good job of that helping me like reverse engineer, uh, you know, what my goals are and the numbers. And uh, I'm excited. 2022 is going to just be insane. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about your 2022, uh, business plan. Can you kind of break it down for us? Your goals, your plan, your lead sources, your schedule, stuff like that. Absolutely. Let me bring it up here. So I, I actually, um, uh, you know, for my schedule, yeah, let's go to the schedule first while I bring up this other thing. Perfect. So for my schedule, um, you know, I, I, for a long time, I wanted to try to wake up like around, you know, seven Sure. <laughs> and, uh, and thinking that somehow, you know, wake up with the sun, like Jeff Bezos does. Yeah. And, uh, it's just not a reality. Like if you yeah. want to get those calls in early before people are calling you, you got to get up. So my goal is to get up at four 30. I it's a uh, wake way and walk. That's my, my Love three it, W's man. wake way and walk. And then uh, that's until six. And then I do a, a shit shower and shave at six. Love it. And uh, let me pause and, you for a second. Yeah. I want to break, I want to break down the first one, yeah. wake way and walk. So wake way yourself and then walk. Is that the deal? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Every it. day, every day. And so there's a couple of key things here that literally has changed my life too. Weighing yourself daily is critical. Just tracking like everything else to see, okay, what did I do yesterday? And how is my body weight fluctuating? That's massive. And then walking literally changed my entire life. Uh, I struggle a lot with, most people don't know this, Mike, but I struggle a lot with, with anxiety and walking like cured me of that. And so it helps me, my creative side helps me get more clear. I just went on a nice walk right before this. And uh, anyway, I love that. So, so wake Oh, what is, so it's wake, weigh, and walk. Love that every morning. And then shit, shower, and shave. Love it. Um, what type of shower are you taking? And you know what I mean by that. Yeah. So um, I use soap. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I uh, take a cold shower. And you know what? I've been taking cold showers for... Uh, yeah, this, uh, this is going to sound bad, but like, you know, when I was a kid, we didn't yeah. have power many times. And, um, and so we just didn't have hot water. So I would just take cold showers and, and I felt it just woke me up in the morning too. So I got used to them. Good for you. And then I heard it was healthy. <laughs> I was That's like, okay. right. It's great. You, the, lo and behold, <laughs> your parents were doing you a favor. <laughs> this whole time I thought I was abused. <laughs> exactly. They were doing you a favor. Now that's great. Okay, cool. So keep going. 
yeah. So on the schedule and then, uh, and prospecting. So I take Sundays is just off, you know, uh, completely. And then, so Mondays through Fridays is, um, pretty much the same morning schedule. I'm going to hit the, the new expireds, um, for at seven 30, I'm going to start at seven 30, um, to eight 30. I'm going to do new expires. We actually get quite a few expires here in sure. Orlando. Um, and then, uh, at eight 30, I'm going to start new Fizbos. And then, uh, nine 30 is, uh, old expireds at 10 o'clock is old, old Fizbos. So just 30 minutes on old and, uh, and then Fizbos, uh, old Fizbos. So, yeah. And I'm using follow a boss. So everything just kind Love of it. falls into the, stays in the folder of any contacts and then Vulcan seven of course has been great um for that um follow up so at 10 30 from 10 30 uh to 11 i'm doing any quick follow-ups from before and of course on mondays and fridays my focus on the follow-ups is all fizbos you know on mondays is like hey if, you know if it's a for sale by owner like hey how many sh the market has been so great i've you know we sold three homes this week that's right yeah <laughs> you know how, how many uh how many showings did you get you know and just and keep following up with those fizbos and you know what's funny brandon is those it is um there's certain laws like gravity and i feel like a law with fizbos is you know what agent can last the longest that's it <laughs> that's it yeah. it's like the last man or woman standing yeah gets the listing period yeah. Did you, did you fall off? I mean, I've fallen off where I did, you know, when at times where I wasn't calling in the beginning and I, and I found that lead again and I was like, Oh man, I should give him a call. And I was like, you know, month later it sold. Absolutely. A, all the time, agent, you know, all, all the time, dude. And so, yeah, it's, it's insane. So you're working new old expireds. Well, before we get into that, are you doing any late night prospecting sessions? Are you doing any ultimate prospecting days? Yeah. So Thursday, Thursday is my evening, my evening prospecting. And, Beautiful. uh, and then, and then, um, and then I have what I call, um, expired day and it's Love the it. first, first day of every month. So it doesn't matter if it's a Saturday or a Sunday the, on, on the first of the month, block everything out. And what I'm doing, Brandon, because prospecting is so boring. Yep. What I'm doing for my team is I'm actually going live with my team inside of my group, you know, I have this group mighty realtors yep. and that's my team. And, and so when I go live inside the group, it's kind of like creative, my way of being creative. And so I'm not so distracted by like, man, this is boring. I could go do this and for that. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I love it. Um, and so what is the, how many contacts does the business plan say that you must make daily? Yeah. So I have to make, um, so I didn't really mention my goal, but like, um, so $250,000 for the year is my goal. Okay. And I could screen share, but I could just give you the numbers if you'd rather. Sure. Yeah. Um, so 250,000 is the goal. And um, uh, my tracker, this creative tracker I built, yeah. uh, says I need to make five, uh, five hours a day, um, 51 contacts per day. And I need to get at least five hot leads that will turn into a half an appointment <laughs> per day. Got it. Okay, uh, good. Yeah. And what, what, what is your average commission in Orlando? So I have it um, broken down by average home price, 250,000, uh, 3%. Got it. So seven grand or 7,500 yeah, bucks. Yeah. 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 So um, I, what, what, what should occur, just a little coaching opportunity, what yeah. should occur is that 51 should be cut in half this year. Yeah, it really should be because you shouldn't need 51 contacts because you're going to, you only need, well, how many transactions is that breakout to be? Yeah. So I have, I have this at 33 closings. Yeah. Yeah. You should, you should be able to cut that. I would imagine if we do this interview again and you stick to the plan that through skills, what we talked about at the beginning of the show, that you don't need 51 contacts a day uh, mm -hmm. to hit the goal. It should be right around 25. Yeah, I have, <clears throat> so I have percentages and stuff that are in yeah. there and, and I've been playing with it. And so as I use the calculator, That's right. it will tell me my percentages and it'll put yeah. it back up. And I have, your app is actually really good. It's what I used to test my numbers to see good. if, uh, it, you know, in this Google sheet. Um, and it, it, it is, it's going good. I think it's going to go um, really well. If I, like you said, 20, 51 contacts is a lot. It's a beast. Uh, yeah. Because here's, here's the other thing that I had a lot of fun with from a, 
you know, we talked about prospecting being boring. This is the value of tracking your numbers, like the game of the numbers and getting the ratios down and up where they need to be up is so fun for me. Like maybe I'm just a sales nerd, but dude, I love, love putting in the work and then inputting the data into the tracker and the tracker spitting out all my ratios and like, all right, dude, is my con my, my contact to appointment set ratio is the end all be all for me. This should be like the number one KPI people are, are focused on. And it's like, how low can I get that fucker? How low yeah. can I get that ratio this year? Cause that's a direct reflection of my sales skills. And then how can I get my listing appointment met to appointment uh, to contract signed ratio as high as possible? Those are the two things to me, Mike, that I focus on. And it's so fun for me. Yeah, I, I love it. I love the idea of that. You know, are you putting in the work and like, are you at least doing your part? Like, I, right. you know, not, not that everyone out there has to be faithful, but for me, it's like, you know, I believe in God and like, and, and if I put in my part, yeah, then he'll come, come with the rest. Yeah. You know? And so when it comes to prospecting, it's like, if I put in my part, he'll bring the rest, you know, yeah. but it's just how it works. It's how it works, man. It's, it's, uh, totally how it works. And, um, you know, it's, we, we, we say all the time, you know, I, I believe in God too. And believe it or not, even though I have my foul mouth, I still, yeah. uh, my kids go to private Catholic school and the whole thing, but we still yeah. swear like sailors. But anyway, uh, Catholic, we believe I mean. in like the prospecting gods, dude. Like I really believe in the prospecting gods that if you put in the work that yeah. like great things will happen for you. And so, uh, what's one piece of advice I want to, I don't want to keep you all day. What's one piece of advice that you would give to a new agent who's watching this, who really is determining based on this interview, whether or not they get into the business, what's one thing you would share with that person to help them, um, if they do decide to get in the business the most. Just, just, um, you know, like when I first started, Brandon, I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. That was the biggest thing. And so I joined a team. I changed brokerages two times. Yeah. I built all these different algorithms. Like just take action. That's the first thing. And so if they're thinking about like, well, is this the action that I want to take? Maybe there's some other great opportunity that they're thinking about taking. Well, if real estate is something that you're, you're thinking about doing, just swallow the pill right now that you're going to be a salesperson, that you are going to, <clears throat> and deeper than that, you're going to be a people person. You're going to be a, a, a study of the psychology of why people make decisions the way that they do. And if you become a master at that, you can sit in a living room full of people. And when people are asking you like, well, what well, should I get into real estate? You can very honestly and methodically tell them, no. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right. You shouldn't. And, yeah. and some people should, some people shouldn't. You know? Right, right. That's great advice. And uh, it's so true. Like if you're in this business, like you have to be good at a lot of things, you know, but the reality is, and I love how transparent and honest you are, and it's one of my biggest words. You remind me a lot of my good friend up here in Detroit, who's on my team. And um, he, he's a big marketing guy. Um, and it gets him in trouble a lot because he's just so all over the like, shiny object for him is like a tattoo he should put on his forehead <laughs> to remind him to stay focused and to take action because he yeah. gets so caught up into widgets and gadgets and systems and processes like you get him into Vulcan seven and he'll be lost for nine hours. Cause he's building, you know, integration, mm -hmm. API integrations with follow-up boss and making robot robots come yeah. out of the ground with like mailers. It's like, bro, <laughs> just make calls. He's like, Oh yeah, shit. All right. Pick up the phone yeah. like four days later, you know? Yeah. But, that, but you know what, that, there's a, another side to that too. Right. So, so like if you want to build a business in real estate and you want to be the number one guy or gal, and that's your goal, then you got to be a salesperson. But maybe, you know, this is Gary Vee advice. Maybe you're better off being a number two, being uh, Brandon's admin. Yeah. Or like your buyer's agent who is just like killing it, cleaning it up, you know? So, so know thyself and know like what it is you're good at. Maybe is the way to look at it. Great advice. Dude, you just gave me goosebumps because <laughs> this, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why, yeah. because this is such an ego based yeah. business. Everyone gets in this and like, they think they need to be famous, but yeah. you just nailed it. There are more successful number twos out there than most solo agents. Like my buyer agent cranked 300. 
this year. Yeah. Yeah. See that. And, and nobody knows people- her name. No one. She's not on any, she's <laughs> nothing. And she's cranking cash because yeah. she has no ego. And yeah. so, you know, there's, that's something to be said uh, for sure. It's like, dude, maybe you'd be better off being a number two and you'd be yeah. smashing it. And you know, what's funny is I actually think that about myself sometimes I'm like, Right. Should I be a number two? You know, a mighty Mike should get a mighty Mike. Be a number two? <laughs> and I'll come and then I'll always come back to like when it's it's not ego based. It's like knowing myself. Yeah. Right. It may be a little bit ego based where it's like, you know, I know myself. I know I want to like, you know, conquer this thing. And like, I'll never forgive myself if I don't like. But if that's not you and you're kind of just like, well, I see that person is like doing it this way. Maybe I should do it that way. That's not how you do it. You look at your own skill set and then and then figure out the actions and then put them in order and you're going to fail at these first three or four things. And you just know that, what am I going to learn from those so that you can then put it into action in something you're actually good at, you know? That's right. And self-awareness, what a great skill that is so underestimated today. It's in, it's incredible. But if people have more self-awareness, I think they could do a little bit more about what you're talking about. So dude, listen, I appreciate you so much. Uh, I can't wait to be on your show. We just we just did it. So end of this month, I'll be on your show. How can people who are watching this out there thinking about getting into real estate, newer to real estate, how can they connect with you? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I mean, I got a lot of different things going on. I would say um, the Mighty Mike show on YouTube. You could go check that out. You know, I interview real estate investors. So if you want to see what it's like to have a show for your customers that like highlights your potential customers, that would be a good example. Um, and then Brandon, I just want to say like, if anybody, you know, I know these people are watching this, if they haven't already reached out, definitely uh, reach out to Brandon, his team and, and just join our group. We meet every, you know, Monday and Thursday. And, and I'll tell you, Brandon, the first time, and I, Brandon didn't ask me to say that. I'm just saying it, Brandon, the first coaching call I got on, and I go to a lot of coaching calls. I was just blown away by the direct value to my own business that you were giving as people were asking questions. And I was like, this is guys, the real deal. And so I had only made the first payment <laughs> and I was like, I was like, this guy's the real deal. Give send the rest of the money. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. funny. I appreciate that, dude. That means a lot coming yes. from you. Cause I respect you so much and, and I know how much, you know, value you bring to the group. So, so I appreciate the words for real. And, um, of course. I just wish you nothing but but the best this year. And I know you've got a great plan. You got a great business plan. Time to execute. Time to put our head yeah. down and uh, and get it, and get it going. So thank you so much for doing this, pouring back into the industry. Let's do this again very soon. And I'm sure I'll uh, I'll see and talk to you very soon. Thanks, Mighty Mike. Thanks so much, Brandon. You guys, take some mighty action. I love it. See you, brother. <laughs> take care. See ya.